My name is Jean Marie Gerasio, and I was the curator and participating artist in the show Coming Unbound Book as Sculpture. In this show, 11 artists assembled materials that they had available to them, and they expressed with that material as personal ideas, opinions, and messages. I like to think of this show as a celebration of the book. The history of the book is a history about change. Information, ideas, and messages, stories from the very beginning have creatively recorded with whatever materials were available at the time. I, I heard the sculpture very strong, the book is sculpture, so I started thinking about how to build things with the books and started stacking them and piling them and and then I moved from there and thought about cutting them and using them like building blocks and then I freed myself up. I've been afraid of them. I've been moving them around and shuffling them and piling them but suddenly because they were books I couldn't tear them or paint them or change them in any way. Suddenly I realized I could and I started tearing the pages. And then I crunched them, so I ended up crunching them, and, and they made these wonderful balls. At first it was just frustration, what am I going to do with all this pile of paper I've ripped out of this book? But then the balls themselves became uh, an object. to do. So I didn't go that direction. I'm, I made a couple little books on um, one piece that's over here, the um, journals of a traveling, uh, wandering traveler. I made some little books, which was fun because I went online and I watched some um, tutorials on how to make books. So it was kind of a fun little adventure to make these tiny little journals using the signatures and sewing them and, and uh, finding old pieces of leather that were from an old scrapbook that I made for the covers. The first piece I did was this one So that was my first piece. The, there's another little piece over here. It's the uh, wizard's wagon of wisdom, wandering words. <laughs> this one sort of made itself. I, I, had, I did have an old book that had already fallen apart. So I felt maybe I could honor the book and use some of the pages. So it just, I just started, started bundling the pages, folding them and bundling them and then just arranging them and it just sort of came together on, on its own. And that I found really a lot of fun. Um, the piece behind me was a bit of a collaboration with myself and my husband because he did some of the woodwork because I had plan to use the top book that I made as the writer and he said well you know I have this idea and I would like to play with it and if you're okay with that just let me do that and if you don't like it you don't have to use it so he made the keel and the rudder and the little book on the rudder, as the rudder and it, and then it just sort of came together um, I, I wanted the boat to to represent a, a book in a sense so the sail was part of the I'm coming undone of the book. And then I got to use my little book as the flag on the mast. So it was kind of a challenge for me at first. And then as
artist and have been for the last 20 years. So when I was asked to be part of the show, it was, um, I don't know, it was a little carrot in front of me to do something that has been in my mind for many years. And I used to etch all my metals using various acids and it was quite a toxic event. Um, recently I've been etching metals using very concentrated salt water and a car battery charger and I'm getting a much deeper, crisper etch. I realized as I was working on the books that content is very important to me also. I just wasn't interested in making a blank journal or a blank book. So um, I tend to do a little photography myself, so I used a lot of my own photographic images, especially in the, uh, the little book that has the poppies coming up through the boundary. Um, those are all photographic images of my own. Um, the little oak leaf book are haikus that I've written over several years and I really love that book that it's um, it's all about book but it's all about nature and, and being out of bounds, <clears throat> out of the boundaries of a normal book. The If you haven't had a chance to look at the superhero piece, the Global Academy of Superheroes, it's just a really fun piece. Um, it talks about the superheroes who are the most re recent graduates from the um, Global Academy and what their superheroes are and there's a little humor tucked into each one of those um, pages. And uh, then the last book I did is just behind this post and it, it has to do with tools. And being a metal worker, tools are really important to me and I gravitate toward tools. So instead of making a traditional binding on this book, I used two small C-clamps as the binding to hold the book together. And then inside are just some nice um, macro images of tools. I just started tearing books apart rather uh, recently, like last couple of years. And the reason I think is because my professional background is in bookbinding and restoration of rare books. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for many years of restoring books tediously restoring books. So the idea of tearing them apart um, was kind of new for me. First pieces against that wall were three pieces and I call that Untitled. And um, I did that uh, after some thought because for me they're distinctly um, prayer wheels. And where you put all of your prayers, you know, in Prayer Wheel Historia uh, in Tibet and China, all of the prayers that you pull, put in the prayer wheel and you turn, spin it around and it just sends your prayers out. And this next piece over here, the one that's hanging, uh, were recycled books from the library and I just recovered them. And um, that particular um, installation or uh, piece uh, has a story story with it. I started walking one day. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. It was very quiet. And a little uh, woman was sitting on her stoop and she was selling um, corn on the cob roasted. And it looked delicious. So I bought one and I started on my merry way. And it was the best corn on the cob I have ever had. And I was just walking on my way and I was turned the corner and there was a little three-year-old. And he was eating his corn on the cob. And it was <coughs> the perfect, most spontaneous moment. We both lifted that corn and we both smiled and started giggling as if to say, isn't this the best ever and aren't we lucky? I'll never forget that. Because um, I connected with another person on a level that didn't need any words. And, um, so that's what that piece it says to me. So all of the pieces that hang down from the books are um, calligraphy words of who, who lives in the village. There's the child and the mother and the old man and the, and the dog. and um, It creates a village in the community. And there's a circle on the, the bottom there that symbolizes that. And then in the middle is a symbol for corn. <laughs> so, um, I had these book covers um, that I had gotten from somebody else, and I think one or two of them I tore, but the, the, the guts of the book were already out. They were empty covers. 
Um, and so I just started painting because it was something I'd wanted to do and why I was glad to have received the papers a long time ago. And so when I started doing that, I, was, I immediately was working with something I love working small. I love, it's like stitch work. I like working tiny. I like painting tiny. I used to make tiny jewelry. I mean, tiny's my thing, apparently. And so I got, and got right into that with the realism of it. So I started another one, and all of a sudden the story started emerging that I was kind of telling myself as I was painting. And I, out of what I was painting, and all of a sudden it became what the description is on the wall of the fact that these paintings were done apparently or believed by a museum, that they were painted by the two twin daughters that are in the center frame, circular frame, oval frame, and that it's, was, these pieces were all found in this abandoned shelter or house on this island in the Laurel <laughs> Sea. And it was like, yeah, I just got it. Was like, and it just came in bits and pieces. It was very sweet. So I got to name the family, and I love maps, so I did a map of where they were remembering they came from because there was, of course, no indication of how they landed on this island. And, um, and they were gone from the island, and there was no indication of how they left. So it was like loving that mystery out of not wanting to get, go too much into the story. Um, and I just like that time period for me. It kept flipping around in the Victorian period and not really knowing why they were traveling, but that might be something that continues for me. But that and the fact of starting to imagine the place they were in just started happening. And that was the other pages that they're mounted on, or dictionary pages on the mounting behind each painting. And so that was the idea of there being the wallpapering in the shelter was all from old book pages that they had found or were washed up on shore, whatever might have happened. Um, and then taking those pages to make the little florets and then using vintage buttons from that time period and um, vintage uh, tape, uh, bias tape, although it's not a bias tape, it's a satin. Tape, which I use the very last bit of that tape, which is a favorite color of mine and stuff. So there's lots of things in here that I really loved, and I was very happy. I'm very happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> this family and the story and the sort of the mystery of it. So I just decided that I wanted something of this tropical island, and therefore the leaves started being cut out and um, softening the edges. There were a lot more too much. So it was constantly in process, even the day we were hanging it. Yeah, and the only other thing I might mention is in the one book cover of the cat, it's on the inside and it's done as if it were a sketch, a working sketch, which um, was sort of fun to just put that little twist. And I had fun with some of the titles, like, can you tell me the one of the danger? I can't remember, the green one with the bird. What? Facing danger. Facing danger. That was really one that got juicy around the story of all of it. So there was a lovely dead bird hanging <laughs> um, and putting it upside down. So was, you know, playing with that a little bit, same humor, little bits of here and there. So yeah, so it's a story within a story, and for me, it's like the book covers tell the story, even without the story that was once in. And the title is very important to me because that's what I started first. I unbound the book by tearing pages. And pretty soon I discovered I can tear the page from the bottom up or from the top down and it makes a different edge. So these uh, two pieces over there are made that way. And then um, sometimes little pieces stood up they were sort of like a little sculpture by themselves. Um, but I didn't use those because I was afraid of their fragility. Then the more lighter pieces, um, the coat boxes, 
Well, my coke box kept sitting in the backyard, empty. So one day I looked out the window and I said, oh, I'll take you to the studio. And then I had, just like my wooden bowls, I had a framework on which I then painted for here I could stay. So that's how the roads came to be. And because um, I figured they would be a little bit, you know, dust could get in or they could be touched, so I wanted to um, give them a, a skin. Right? So then that's what, when I waxed them. And then I, I started these pieces where I waxed, I used the edges of the page where, where things are only white. And then I tore like each page in about two, three thirds, rather. And so I had the edges on both ends, the, what do you call it, the margin, and then the words written. So even just with those three, you have different, different uh, colors and appearances. And then I added wax color to them, sometimes very subtle, and then on the top more strongly. So it sort of led from one to the other very nicely. And uh, the uh, stone words <coughs> I had made, and I had for the longest time in the shape of a spiral. But then when I stuck them in the book again, that you have the lines and the reading all related. 